Hello, hello. Listen, I know you wanna check out this message, but before you do, I wanna invite you to come check us out in person. Here at Free Life Chapel, we're all about family and would love to connect with you face to face. So if you're ever in the Central Florida area, come check us out. Here at FLC, we wanna help you discover and live the free life in Christ. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how you can be a part, Check us out at freelifechapel.org. Until then, check out this message. Anybody grow up in a home where your mom and dad or your grandma or auntie, like they believed in, uh, how do you put this, uh, whoopings? Yeah. Oh, look, look at that. See, we came out all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We're, like, we're fine, right? There was no one, two, three. I heard a kid a while back finish the numbers for their mom. Four, five, six, seven. I'm like, oh, but do you understand when I was growing up, I, be, I would have seen Jesus by number eight. Do you understand? My mama grew up with my she, she had a, a Ph.D., um, a, a Pentecostal hairdo. She, she had that stacked high, you understand. And there's something hyper holy about a woman st with her hair stacked high. Bobby pins everywhere. You know what I'm talking about, right? And, and I, I love G, all, all that. But man, if there was any disrespect in that house, that woman, that hair would come down if it had to. She had mama's helping hand, this little paddle about two feet long, about, about that thick and about that wide, and she knew how to swing that thing. That's all I got to say. And I grew up with that. And it, when it, if my mom, if I was in trouble and my mama called me, if my mama used my government name, I, you knew I was in trouble on that day, right? <laughs> Brian Scott Thomas. My blood would run cold down my back. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? When you heard your name called like that, you knew it like, it, it's up. Here we go. I'm, Jesus, here I come. It's the big one, right? Me and Sanford and Son, right? All that going down. If you don't get over here now, there was some, my mama could say something like that, and how it, it would scare me straight. That's all I got to say. And if y'all can't relate with that, you know what it's like to be driving down the road, I-4, wherever, Florida Avenue, and all of a sudden you see the popo sitting over there. Model citizen, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, <laughs> two miles under the speed limit, you're hitting brakes, you got drinks and stuff flying everywhere trying to slow it down. Because there's something, that, there's some things that will scare you straight in life is what I'm trying to tell you. That's all of us, that's all of us. Uh, in, 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 in the Bible we see different scriptures that are kind of scary. We see some scenarios that are kind of scary. In fact, there's, there's one that popped up where Israel as a nation had just left Egypt. And when they were coming out, uh, Pharaoh was chasing them. He had released them because the 10 plagues had gone on and then he got aggravated because they left. So he decided, no, I'm gonna come and bring you back. He's chasing them and Israel as a nation is afraid. They start complaining to Moses, we're gonna die. Why did you bring us out here? At least we would, we, we'd rather stay in slavery. At least we wouldn't die. We'll stay back there. And, and Moses is hearing all the chatter and he goes and he talks to God. And, 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 and here's, here's what Moses comes back with in Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. He says this, Moses answered, don't be afraid. Stand your ground and you will see what the Lord will do to save you today. You will never see these Egyptians again. The Lord is fighting for you. So be still. Or the way my mama would say it, sit down and shut your mouth. <laughs> sit down, wait, be still. Many translations, you might have heard this growing up. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That things are looking really bad around you right now. But hold, stand, and watch God deal with it. What's happening around you is not going to happen to you. 
And it's really scary when the circumstances get close and surround you and you feel like a victim of them when the truth is it's just close. It hasn't actually taken over, but you see it coming. And you and I are masters at seeing trouble and then acting as if the trouble has already happened. We lose sleep all night because, oh, my God. I don't, I, one, one university did a big study on fear. They discovered 93% of fears never happen. Like, would you please save it for a good situation to be afraid of? Not this one, right? I mean, it's, it's like we, 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 we can so respond. And Moses is, is talking back to them that the events the events surrounding you right now, they are scary. But no matter how bad it looks... Basically, for you and I, keep your eyes on Jesus. I know things can be going crazy in the family, and I know the report that the doctor said isn't great, and, and I know the economy, and I know the government, and I know it's election season. Jesus, help all of us. Like, I know all that's going on, but I need you to hold your ground, breathe deep, and keep your eyes on me. In the midst of all of it, look to me, trust me, I'm going to handle this. We have to find a peace for life somewhere. And if the peace that you have for life comes because you feel like you've got to be in control, then, baby, you're going to be toe up for the rest of your life because that's what you call false security. None of us are in control of any situation in our life. One text message can rock your world. One report from the doctor can completely derail you. There's a, it, we're not in control of any of it, and we've got to find a peace that is greater than ourselves. And that's what I want to talk to you about today because you and I are living in some crazy times right now. Oh, yes, we are. Turn to someone and tell him he's telling the truth right now. He's telling the truth right now. And that's a special thing, a preacher telling the truth. And so I want to talk about that today. Jesus was with his disciples and he was asked by his disciples. They said, tell us when the end is coming. Tell us when the end is here. Like, like when it's all going to just come to an end, like all this thing called life. You do understand that the world we're living in can't continue this way forever, right? It is in a spiral. It's, it's you and I are holding on to this ball called a globe and we're riding it, but this thing is headed somewhere and it's not getting better or good. It's actually, in, and, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a pessimist, I'm a realist about this. And what I'm, great, what I'm grateful for is the Bible gives us specific direction, information, understanding on times just like we're living in. You may not realize it, you're living in some biblical times right now. You're living in times that my grandparents used to always talk about. My parents used to always talk about, and here we are in 2024 living in some times that I'm going to read to you in the Bible, and you're going to go, oh, dang. Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 through 14. I usually don't read a novel whenever we come to church, but I just have to read this, and I want you to hold on for the ride and keep your eyes open because when the highlighted words hit it, I need your help. But here is what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. Later, he, that's talking of Jesus, was sitting on Mount Olives. His disciples approached him and asked him, Tell us, when are these things going to happen? What will be the sign of your coming? What's, what, what, that, that the time is up. Jesus said, Watch out for doomsday deceivers. Many leaders are going to show up with forged identities claiming, I am Christ, the Messiah. They will deceive a lot of people. When reports come in of wars and rumored wars, keep your head and don't panic. This is routine history. This is no sign of the end. Nation will fight against nation and, and, and ruler fight ruler over and over. Famines and earthquakes will occur in various places. This is nothing compared to what's coming. They're going to throw you into the wolves, uh, throw you to the wolves and kill you. Everyone hating you because you carry my name. And then, going from bad to worse, it will be a dog eat dog. Everyone at each other's throat. Everyone hating each other. In the confusion, lying preachers, lying preachers, lying preachers will come forward and deceive a lot of people. For many others, the overwhelming spread of evil will do them in. Nothing left of their love but a mound of ashes. Staying with it, that's what God requires. Stay with it to the end. 
You won't be sorry and you'll be saved. All during this time, the good news, the message of the kingdom will be preached all over the world. A witness staked out in every country and then the end will come. You ever had a medical procedure or a dental procedure done and, and you go, when you're leaving the procedure, the doctor will look at you and say, now listen, you know, if your leg falls off, that's normal, right? It's just like, like they start telling you side effects of what could happen. Like, okay, you, you go and you, you get dental work done. Like, okay, you're not going to fill the left side of your face for the next four hours. That's normal. Don't chew on your lip. You're gonna, don't try to drink stuff. It'll slide. Like, they, they give you a prognosis as to what's normal now based on what's going on. And, and, and what they tell you is a little bit weird, and they have to tell you because you're not used to this. Usually I have full function of all of my lip, and right now I can't feel half of my lip. And so they tell you, and it's normal. Isn't it funny how everything is normal to all the doctors? Like, oh, yeah, it's, it's just normal. It's fine. My foot doesn't work. It's normal. Yeah, it, it, it happens. Like they, they, they just, but what they're doing is when you're leaving, they're telling you you may feel this way, it may look this way, it may not act right. It's okay. It's expected. Jesus basically is stepping in and said, look, there's going to be some crazy take place. Crazy is going to come unhinged. Stuff's going to come untied. And I need you to understand, I got it. I'm going to have, you're either going to trust what you see or you're going to trust me. But you're going to have to decide which one you're putting your trust in. And if you'll look to me, I'm just telling you, let me, let me lay out, I'm going to tell you what's on the way so you can rest knowing if I told you what's coming, then you understand I probably have control of it. It might be out of your control, but it's not out of mine. And so Jesus starts describing these crazy, scary times, watch this, before he returns. Again, you all do know there is a day coming that we're going to see Jesus face to face, right? I wish I had time today, and I don't, to talk to you about this event that's going to hit the church called the rapture of the church. The catching away, people who have been looking to him, serving him, loving him. There is a clock ticking, and when it hits a certain hour, Billions will disappear off this earth. Pastor, do you believe that? Baby, yes, I do. And we're going to be talking coming up some scripture to show you the impact and the effect of this. I'm, it, it, it's, the Bible speaks directly to this. And this is what the disciples are asking Jesus. Does this mean we're at the end? And Jesus goes, no, no, no. But, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, what, where, where we're headed. The things I'm going to tell you right now are leading up to the rapture of the church. And then the end will hit. The rapture of the church, the tech catching away is not the end. It is right before the end. So these things are leading up to the catching away, the disappearance, the going to heaven of believers. That's what Jesus is speaking of here. And he begins to lay out and identify some pretty crazy things. He says there's going to be world turmoil. There's going to be nation against nation. What's interesting about that word is nation that is used here is ethnos, ethnicity against ethnicity. There's going to be racism that's going to rise right before I come back. Don't look at your phone. Keep looking at me. <laughs> kingdom against kingdom, famines, food shortage, pestilence, disease, pandemics, earthquakes, hurricanes, wildfires, are going to become normal, just chill. Ladies and gentlemen, you turn on the news today, you flip through your phone, there's something different happening in California, something happening in, in China. It's, it's all over the world, things breaking loose, just like we, we just had a guy named Milton run through here. I'm just saying, we, there's things happening. The world, in fact, the Bible talks about the earth is groaning. The earth is shifting because it is in response to God. When will you come back for this? The, the Bible talks about it. Jesus said there will be global turmoil. He then says there's going to be persecution of Christians. Christ followers are going to be persecuted. People offended. There's going to be betrayal and attack and hate. Christians are being 
persecuted globally right now. You, you and I live in America and we don't even understand. We, what we call persecution is when cable goes out. But I, I, I'm here to tell you it's a little bit more difficult than that. Just a few years ago, we had video of 12 Coptic Christian men who were kneeling on a beach and they said, renounce God or lose your head. And none of them would renounce Jesus and they lost their head on video. There is persecution going on. In fact, in 2023, the top nations that persecute Christians, number one, is North Korea. There are 400,000 Christians in North Korea right now. 50 to 60 of them are working in labor camps right now. The underground church in North Korea is massive, secretively serving Jesus, but they can't let the government know what's going on. Somalia, Yemen, there is mass persecution. If you declare that you are a Christ follower, they will come for you and your family. This is what's going on in our world right now. Jesus said, society, one of the ways you're going to know that the end is coming, society is going to live offended. Some of y'all get upset when someone's sitting in your favorite seat when you come to church. Oh, my God. The Bible said, like, people are going to live, like, upset, angry. It's just not fair. I can't believe you did. Like, this is where we are today. Betrayal, hate, degrees of oppression, rebellion and leadership. Like, all of this, everyone just walking around just angry, just on the edge. You bump into someone's cart at Walmart, and it's a throwdown. It's crazy. Smackdown 2024, Walmart. Now, I mean, it's crazy. It's what? I saw a video of somebody, two women were fighting, fist fighting in the drive-thru at McDonald's. Got offended, so they jumped out of the car. Who do you think? And here they are. They thought, like, would you just get your nuggets and leave? <laughs> People are walking around just so tense. No one knows how to say, hi. oh, no, it's okay, no problem, it, yeah, go ahead. We're, we're so, hmm. Jesus said there's going to be growing crime, chaos, immorality will be rampant in the culture. Evil, sin, perversion, normalized, passing laws to remove it from being wrong to now it's celebrated and funded Leaders, politicians, government, all corrupt. Ladies and gentlemen, P. Diddy wasn't partying alone. Where's everybody else? We got the, the corruption that is running in the underground of all of this. It is laid out. It is being worked. People are hiding. They're covering their backs. They're paying people off. People that we voted into office that we think are the most amazing leaders in the world. It's toe up from the flow up. Do you understand? Humanity is running amok. Fabricated data. Info leaks going on everywhere. Everybody is right. No one knows who to trust. Everyone is seized up. This is the world. Jesus said it's coming. There's going to be all that. And then another thing Jesus said is Christians are going to lose passion for him. Christ, he began, he, he no longer just look at culture. Let me bring it home. You, Scott, the church, Christians, people who say they're Christ followers are going to lose their love for me. In fact, the word, said, the word that's used in the Greek, the original, it, it says the love of many. The word many is mega. The love of the majority of those who say they're Christ followers. The love, their passion for me is going to be just nice. I can take him or leave him. He's a box I check. I'm a Christian. They just take him so casual. They don't have any biblical principles. There's no convictions. They just, they just do whatever. It's just my personal feelings decide. I can do what I want. It's, it's, I own this body. I can do whatever I want with it. Jesus is no longer taken into account. I serve my wants. I serve whatever makes me comfortable. Whatever makes me look good in culture. That, Jesus said, those people... Christians, people who are coming to church are going to take on that attitude that I don't have to do it the Bible way. I'll do it my way. Call themselves Christians. And what Jesus says is their love has gone cold and they don't even realize it. And then out of all of that, 
if the news couldn't get any worse, he said, here's the worst of it, the absolute worst of it. All of that is bad, but here is what he, in fact, he says, be careful of this one right here. The most dangerous thing in the world. Are you ready? This, this is not, this is Bible. Deceptive preachers. He said, the most dangerous person in the church is the preacher. It's Bible. Deceptive preachers. Great speakers, but they're just biblically illiterate. They know how to preach and get the crowd excited. They just don't know how to live what they preached. I can turn it on and turn it off. Or I can preach something that sounds good, but it's just not even Bible. In fact, the Bible says, 1 Peter says, that the day is coming, and these are the days that are being talked about. The day is coming that church people will flock to those preachers who are preaching a gospel they want. Not what Jesus said, but one that sounds good and makes them feel better in culture. It's not so different. It's not that, I don't, you know, no, we just, we just have to love everybody. Oh, we do love everybody. But there is a truth nonetheless. There is an edge to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, come out and be separate. Be different. There's got to be something different about the Christ follower's life that when they enter culture, people realize there's something different on your life and I need whatever it is that you have. That doesn't happen when we all just look the same, talk the same, act the same, entertained by the same. It, it, there's got to be something different about us. And the Bible says that they, they're gonna be, they're, there's going to be these preachers who are either going to be biblically illiterate or they're going to be self-serving. And he, the Bible tells us, be careful of those folks. They will get into where they worship their crowds. They'll start to worship their worship. Ooh, let me hit a sidebar right here. I'm all about what I see on social media with thousands gathering in arenas to worship. I just want to know, are you living different after you leave the worship session? Or is it just an emotional high you've jumped into that you've sanctified your entertainment, but it hasn't really changed your heart? Because worship is not a song. Worship is a posture of my heart when it comes to who he is. I live at his service to honor him. Today, we have turned our Christian music into such entertainment, I question if it's, if it's even worship-filled anymore. We can't worship our programs. We can't worship our church name. We can't worship the crowds. We can't worship our Friday night events where people from the community are showing up. We worship him and him alone. And this is what God's word says of be with it. He said, you got to watch this. But then, then he comes in the end and he begins to give us some hope. And I'm so glad he did. He says, no, 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 stay with it. Hang in there. When you see these things coming, hold on and realize I'm still in control. That it looks like the world is chaotic and it's gone crazy. In the Middle East, there's always a war going on. And U.S. got attacked. All this is going on. Hold. Get a grip on me. We're going to get through this thing. He says, if you'll stay with it, if you'll endure till the end, you'll be safe. You'll be saved. Everything is going to be fine. What do you mean endure? Stand strong under the pressure. Don't let culture take your mind hostage. Don't get swayed off of my word, my way, my truth my life, knowing me, serving me, discovering me. Hold right there, Free Life Chapel. Don't lose your grip on me in the chaos of everything. It's happening around you, but I'm the one who's controlling what's happening in you. Keep peace in your heart and keep your focus on me. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trouble. It's coming, but take heart. I overcame the world, so whatever it is causing you fear, I cause that fear because I'm greater than the circumstances in your life. And so as we close, I just want to bring you to this place. How do we endure and win with no fear in this culture? How do we do it as Christ followers? How can we come out the other side and this not be a downer message like Jesus why are you throwing all this at us man can you give some good news I want to show you what this is number one if you want to live strong and move your life forward here's how we do it it starts with a relationship with Jesus 
I just got to start from jump. I never want to take my relationship for Jesus, with Jesus for granted. I want to make sure it's primary in my eyes and in my heart. Am I living at his pleasure? Am I serving at his pleasure? Am I breathing at his pleasure? A am I using talent, gift, ability, my time? Am I doing what I can to honor you, serve you, to build your kingdom? It's for him. So here's what I'm saying. If you don't know him, if you've never invited him into your heart, how do you endure in this season? Say yes to Jesus. Invite him into your heart and your life and start to pursue, watch, a relationship with him. Jesus is not a concept. He's not an idea. He's a person. He's to be known, to be talked to, to discover his likes and dislikes, to feel his peace, to have an emotion with him. That's exactly what, that's a relationship. So we have a relationship with Jesus. Number two, how do we endure and win in this season with no fear? Discover your Bible. It is, it, it, it's incumbent upon every believer to know this book. Why would you not study to know this book? It's not above your pay grade. My God, they got 193 translations out there. You can find one that sounds decent. If you're really not sure where to start, start with the NIV. Start with the message version. Just, just get a book, open it, and begin to look. Read the Proverbs and just one proverb a day and, and let the wisdom begin to speak to you and shape your mind and shape your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll be a different person after one month. You, there's no way for this word to enter your heart and you stay the same. It's not possible. You want to change? Right here. Whoop, there it is. Get this word, know this word, study this word, inform your mind of truth, of what's eternal. That feelings, ladies and gentlemen, are not driven by wisdom. I know you feel it deeply, but you can feel it wrong very deeply. Feelings will jack you up. That's why we have devotionals that you can get into. Sunday services, you're here. I love you. You're my kind of people. We have life groups that are running to educate and to build your understanding of this Bible. The blend on Wednesday nights for our young people to learn what it is as a young person to walk out the Word of God. Activate nine months of training to develop the believer, to stand strong and to serve God. There's so many opportunities to build your faith and not let it just be a full or an idea this is your Bible it's not mine it's yours this is a love letter written by God to you these this all of this is about God God is revealing himself to you there's no reason we should be ignorant as to who God is his word tells us relationship with Jesus number one discover your Bible number two because truth always exposes deception There are some things that culture will struggle with on what to do that you and I can look at it and it's very plain, it's very clear. Because the Bible doesn't operate in smoke and mirrors. It's black and white. It's very simple. And to help you make decisions in life quicker, where you're not emotionally led, but principally and truth led, there's nothing like that in the world. Number three, if you're gonna get through this time, endure it, win, come out with no fear, you need a biblical pastor and a biblical church. I didn't say a good, I said a biblical. Today, you know what we're really good at? We're really good at choosing entertainment over leadership. We do this in our government as well. We choose celebrities over leadership. We choose people that we like, but you're never going to have a burger with them. Well, that went over like a lead balloon. I felt that come back to me. It's okay. No, we do this, it's not just this year, it, it's, in, it's in every season of life. It's not just right now. We're going after what, what seems to be the most popular. And ladies and gentlemen, here's what I found out. Some of the things that were most entertaining were the most shallow. But the things that were going to actually help me in life when some hell kicked in was some truth that I needed to hear in my life. And we've got to make sure that we're, we've got a, a leader, a pastoral leader. This is Bible. The, the, my position here is not something I decided. My, my job description is out for everyone to read in 1 Timothy chapter 3. And if I don't line up with that, I'm not supposed to be in this pulpit. I don't get to decide to do this as a career option. This is something God called me to do. And there's great 
great pastors in this city and throughout the nation. All I'm saying is this, you've got to be able to look at that person and you've got to decide, can I model their life? Can I model their attitude? Can I model what they say? Is it biblical or is it sensational? Which one is it that's going to change and affect my life? What is the, what's the experience over time? Can I look at it? Is it time tested? You've got to make sure that what's going into your spirit is truth and it's word. You don't need to hear more about Scott on a Sunday than you do Jesus. Jesus is the one who changes everything. And a church, a church that's rallying focused on Jesus. We're not impressed with the name of our church. How can we impact people? How can we reach our city? How can we reach the community? That is the heartbeat and the passion to serve, to invite, to see life change happen. And when that happens, ladies and gentlemen, everything changes. Our heart and our focus is on him, not on the craziness happening around us. So we can stand here and everything seems to be going to hell in a handbasket. And we're smiling going, God is good. Everything's going to be all right. Because my hope is not built in that. My hope is built in him. Relationship with Jesus. Discover your Bible. Biblical pastor in church. And the fourth one. So last one. The right friends. Y'all need to fire some friends. No, y'all need to issue them a pink slip. It's been so good. Thank you for participating. God bless you. It is, oh, you've been, it's been so much fun. But you crazy. And I'm stepping. You, you got to get the right people in your life. How many of people will screw you up? How many of you have been that person that screwed other people up? Anybody been there? Yeah, I know. We all have. We all have. I'm, it's not always them. No, sometimes it's us. But listen, you better get some folks in your, in your friend group that are pushing you to Jesus, not pulling you from. People that are pushing you to the Bible, not an agenda somewhere. What does the Bible say? 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 Oh, my God, it's always the Bible. You better believe it is. That's what my mama did right here. I walked in my house so many times and see my mom standing on the Bible and she was praying, Father, bless my kids. Father, keep your hand on our family. God, bless our church. God, keep your hand on our home. I'm standing on your word. It's the foundation of, I would watch my mama and her PhD stand on that book. That wasn't sacrilegious. She said, it's the foundation of everything. Let the wind blow. Let the rains hit. Let the storms come. We're built on the rock of Christ Jesus. Jesus and this word heaven and earth will pass away this word will remain forever you better know your book you better get anchored to this book right here you need some friends who believe that book friends who are pushing you to Jesus you need some friends who will every now and then call you out I turned that off myself that was all me so Sam's up there he's panicking no it's all me Sam I just did that Watch this. Matthew 24, verse 14, the, 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 the final verse that we read here. All during this time, the good news, the message of the kingdom will be preached all over the world. A witness staked out in every country. And then the end will come. I want you to understand how close we are, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm done with this. Watch. Christian Broadcasting Network just issued a report last year, 2020, August of last year. I'm sorry, it was August of this year, 2024, about numbers around the world. In Iran right now, out of 75,000 mosques, 50,000 have closed because the Christian growth, the population is on the rise in Iran. They're turning from Islam to Jesus. They now know that they have over one million Christians in Iran right now. According to those reports, the Muslims, precious hearted people there, that's all they know, raised in Islam. But they're saying it's coming up empty. And all we're experiencing is hatred and anger and vitriol. And Jesus, he, they're seeing him as that hope, that joy. And they're reaching, turning their lives over to the point they're closing mosques. One million have said yes to Jesus. And in communist, atheist China, 44 million Christians are throughout China right now. 
the price these people are paying to serve Jesus is next level and worth it in their heart and their mind. Here we stand in America and we have this privilege to gather freely and to worship and declare the word of God even when it might not be fully embraced, it is truth that we still at this point have the privilege and the freedom of declaring and we need to do so and celebrate every moment we can gather and hear music and hear the Bible. We're not ripping pages out and passing pages of the Bible in an underground world that you get it and you read it and memorize as much as you can and then pass the page on because that might be the last Bible you ever see. We're not living in those days. We are blessed in 2024 to have have the word to lead, guide, and direct. We were able to read from Matthew 24 and hear what's happening around the world, but find hope in Jesus today. That's because of where we stand. The kingdom of God is moving, and we're living in these days, the best days, the most exciting days, and you and I are eyewitnesses to watching it all happen right before our eyes. Would you please stand to your feet in this room? I'm bringing this to you today to help you to understand it's not a day to be scared. It's a day to find hope and strength and realize that Jesus is holding all of this in his hand. Everything is going to be all right. Would you turn to someone and tell them everything is going to be all right. So here's the win. Here's the win. Get your heart connected to Jesus and to the church. Keep your eyes open. Understanding and wisdom from God's word. No fear. Peace rules and reigns in your heart because our trust is in him, not anything else. And then from there, you live strong and you live blessed and you laugh out loud every day of your life because we have nothing to, sh to shrink back from and everything to step into. These are the greatest days the Bible ever talked about. And the best is yet to come. Would you bow your heads in this room? you're in this room today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I cannot let this moment go without giving you the chance to start right there and get it right. To completely leverage your life on Jesus and invite him in to take full control. This is the moment to do that. Everything I talked about, none of that has to cause you fear. But if Jesus could so accurately predict what's going to happen in 2024, 2,000 years ago, to tell us what was going to be happening and as you see these things coming, lift up your head. It's about to get exciting. That right there should real, make you realize that he knows what he's talking about and his love is for you and he can hold you in the palm of his hand. If today you say, Scott, I want to accept Jesus as my Savior. I just want to invite him in. I'm going to need that same quiz you took where you got another chance and another chance and another chance. But as long as he keeps giving me more chances to re-up my game, then I'm all about that. I can say yes to him. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is the only place you'll find forgiveness, the only place you'll find peace, the only place that your past goes to sleep. It is the only place that your future comes alive. Why would you not? On the count of three, if you're saying, Scott, I want Jesus in my life today, I'm saying yes to him. I want you to raise your hand. I want you to hold it right there on the count of three. One, two, three. Right now, right now, right now. Hold those hands up. That's right. Jesus is watching. That's right. There's hands all over this auditorium, all through the balcony. I love this. Heaven has seen. I want to ask you to drop your hand. You can pull your hand right down. You raised your hand for Jesus, not for me. You raised it for Jesus. He saw that. I want everyone to pray this. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me. Take everything that doesn't please you. Take it away. I receive you as my Lord. It is my Savior. Forgive me. Change me. Heal me. Give me your peace. I will serve you to the best of my ability. Stand with me. Guide me. And lead me. I'm yours and you're mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can you put those hands together today for your life? We hope you enjoyed this message. To hear more impactful messages just like this one, check us out at freelifechapel.org. We hope you have an amazing week.